Hey! Welcome to Who's to Know. I'm Allison. I'm Brittany. And we're gonna just give you a short intro video of kind of how the channel, how where the idea came from and how it came to be. Yep. So we have been cooking together for about 10 years. Yep. As long as we've been friends. Mm -hmm. And sometimes unwillingly. <laughs> Or at times, Brittany angrily stirred Mexican rice. Yeah. Because she didn't want to triple a recipe. That's true. But we've come a long way mm -hmm. since then. And Julia Child has had a lot to do with it. Yes, and so we want to share our love of cooking with people. Yeah. Because Julia wanted to share her love of cooking with people. Yeah. And cooking has grown us both as people mm -hmm. and it has grown us in a lot of ways where for me it's letting go of perfection mm. and for Brit it's just learning how to cook <laughs> basically <laughs> um yeah and everybody has to feed themselves so you might as well learn how to do it and have it taste good and yeah. have fun doing it and that's learn true. from your mistakes mm -hmm. yeah and that's sort of the heart of Julia right yeah so she didn't get really or figure out that she wanted to even what she wanted to do with her life until it was much later into her life. And then she went to the School of Cordon Bleu in Paris and from there discovered, well, she knew she had a love for eating already, but there she discovered that she could really enjoy cooking. So she went to that school and then um, just she met some friends there and started to cook together. And then from there, that's actually the two other authors that are on the Mastering of the Art of French Cooking with her, mm -hmm. is those two friends she originally met in Paris. Yeah, and this book was years and years and years of labor for them to mm -hmm. compile these recipes in a way that Americans would accept them, but also be concise enough that it was not a seven volume cookbook series, which was the original right. proposal that mm -hmm. publishers were not willing to do. And no. it would have been a bit overwhelming for yeah. <laughs> the yeah. people that really it wound up being mm -hmm. um, accessible to. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Our heart of Julia is in the introduction. It's what makes us love her so much. Right. And yes. Brittany's going to read our favorite part. We talk about it all the time. Yeah, just the very first part. She says, here in the foreword, Julia says this. This book is for the servantless American cook who can be unconcerned on occasion with budgets, waistline, time schedules, children's meals, and the parent chauffeur den mother den syndrome or anything else which might interfere with the enjoyment of producing something wonderful to eat and so we often talk about this we love that phrase of the servantless american cook we i mean that was generations ago when right. people actually had uh cooks who would cook for them that's never been the experience of our lives no. um so we identify with the servantless american <laughs> cook for sure more than julia knew people would in the future probably. right yeah <laughs> So we, we talk about that all the time and we just appreciate um, just her approach to cooking and at the end of that foreword she says a bunch of other funny things and, and one of yeah. them is at the very end is keep your knives sharp. So yeah. that's something we've always said back and forth to each other also. Yeah. And the thing about cooking that Julia really brought to America when she was on PBS years and years ago now. Um, was that this should be something that should be fun. It should not be daunting. Mm -hmm. You should not be so afraid of it that you don't venture forth to try something new. Mm -hmm. And the way that our name came about, mm -hmm. who's to know, right. is that it's not an exact quote, actually. It's mm -hmm. something that we have sort of changed over the years, I suppose. But mm -hmm. she's talking about when you're cooking in the kitchen and company is coming and- You, you drop, drop the lamb on the floor. On the floor. Who's going to know? Who's going to know? And so we've just changed that to who's to know. And so we've always said that to each other when it's, you know. Things happen in the kitchen. You burn something. If, you know, something doesn't go well, who's to know? Right. Nobody's there. And so just not taking yourself so seriously in the kitchen mm -hmm. is really where it helps so much because you can learn from your mistakes and not be just mad about the fact that you made a mistake, even if it means that company's coming over, um, even if it means that you burn up your steaks on the grill and <laughs> company is on their way. You can get mad about it or you can learn your learn what you did wrong mm -hmm. and try it again right. 20 minutes later sometimes. Yeah. Um, and 
just learning to be relaxed about it and do it for the sake of we're feeding people we love, mm -hmm. we're building relationships around the table. Yep. We are building a confidence that you might not have had mm -hmm. if you hadn't learned in the kitchen. So. Yeah. And that's also something she, she talks about is you just got to get in there and start, you know, you got to get in there and start and try somewhere. Yeah. And so, um, she has a lot of quotes about that as well. And, uh, so for me specifically though, this idea came out of, uh, one of my family members saying, I wish somebody would just give me a list of what to make each week or what to make every two weeks. And so, um, I thought, well, I could give you this menu, right? I could write this out for you and then you would have it. But if you don't know how to cook any of the things that are on there, then what good is it? So I thought, well, we could, I could just have them over for dinner and show them how to make each one of these recipes. And then I thought, well, who, that's a lot of time. So I thought, well, I could just video it and just share it with them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, what's the, I mean, what's the perfect way to make a video and share it with somebody? It's YouTube. And so I shared that idea and that conversation with Allison and she thought we should just make a channel and do all those things together Yeah. or trade off on doing certain things that um, one maybe has over the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have very different phases of life, cooking styles, cooking backgrounds. And so we have different things we're bringing to the table with this. So that's the neat part is. I cook for five people on a daily basis, and so some of my recipes may be a bit overwhelming in the quantity <laughs> factor Yeah, if you're not cooking for five people. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so Brittany brings a lot to the table with that, as well as not overcomplicating things, yeah. um, which I can tend to do at times. So there's a lot of really good balancing that mm -hmm. we hope will be brought right. by us working together. Yeah. And that, that's also just going to display part of our friendship, which is a balancing of mm -hmm. uh, each other in the sense of very, uh, Allison is very optimistic and just excited and enthusiastic about life. And those, none of those words really describe <laughs> me. So, so we have leveled each other out yeah. in the, in the past. And that is also, it's, it also changes how we uh, approach cooking mm -hmm. and things. So mine's a very, not that hers is impractical, but it's just that I do have to eat something, so let's just cook a piece of chicken. Well, there could be a little bit more enjoyment to it than just cooking a piece of chicken. So, and because I am cooking for myself, that is a question people have often asked me is, well, what do you cook every week? Well, the answer is not really a concrete one. It's kind of just mm -hmm. a mix of this and a mix of that. It's It's yeah. been hard to nail down and say, well, because there's not, there, there can be a structure, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, well, Sometimes that just goes out the window if, you know, I decide yeah. to do something else that evening. So yeah. that's another thing that's going to vary between the two is, you know, a, a lot of people who have families, they have to mm -hmm. schedule out those meals and they go to the store, the grocery store, maybe once a week. I, I will go a couple times a week if I'm not sure what I'm making at the beginning. I don't mm -hmm. do just one large, you know, grocery store trip and that's okay. It, it's different for everybody. So. Yeah. That's also part of what's going to be displayed is how, how it can look differently, but still get to the same end goal of cooking, mm -hmm. um, you know, good food from fresh ingredients. And that was another thing Julia really emphasized is even if you can't find exactly what's in this cookbook, and we're not just going to be cooking from this cookbook, trust me, that's already been done. Go watch that movie. Um, <laughs> that, that's not happening here. But um, she really emphasized just make, just use fresh ingredients, you know, yeah. fresh vegetables cooked in the right way are, you know, delicious as is everything mm -hmm. else. So she really also emphasized that. Yeah. And the other piece was, as we've talked about a lot is you can go to Pinterest, you can go to Google, you can find as many recipes as you want to find. There's cookbooks galore yeah. everywhere you go. And so it's not necessarily that we're bringing recipes to this channel. It's that we are bringing how a visualization of the concept of how do you do something because that can be really hard especially if you are really new to cooking mm -hmm. it can be really daunting to think i don't know what to do i've got a knife but i don't know how to use it mm -hmm. or um this recipe uses these terms and i'm really uncomfortable because i don't know what those terms mean and so okay. it tends to deter people who don't have that experience and that's really a shame because if you don't understand it, then of course it's going to be really scary. Mm -hmm. And so to hopefully bring a little bit more insight and be able to teach through visual, um, 
visual means, hopefully that our heart is that that will give people the courage. And mm -hmm. Julie uses the word courage a lot. Mm -hmm. um, give people the courage to really just try something new and not be afraid of the fact that it might fail and might not even be the first time. It might be the sixth or seventh time you've done it. And for some reason it fails. And mm -hmm. Julia never stopped learning. That was the other thing is mm -hmm. that inspires us is that she would have a problem and it might be 10 years before she found the answer to that problem. And so just because you did something one time and it didn't work, don't give up. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to see us make mistakes. <laughs> and we just learn from them and move on mm -hmm. and try not to make the mistake a second time. Mm -hmm. Also, just with the idea of teaching some of the basic techniques of how to dice an onion, how to cut an onion, and what it means to saute something versus um, caramelize. caramelize and all those different things that are, are the basic building blocks that you can learn and then you can build on. Mm -hmm. And so then you would have an idea of, okay, so I'm making this recipe that is for two people how do I turn it into a recipe that feeds six people? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you just yeah, you just learn how to do it, but you have to practice at it. And I think that's the biggest thing that um, that I have learned is it's not just going to come out right probably the per perfectly the first time. You have to work at it and try at it. And um, the other thing that Allison mentioned about cooking for people, there is a lot of joy that I never anticipated that I would feel in making and preparing food for other people and, and having that food then shared around the table. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of joy that comes with that. And um, so that's another thing that Julia really emphasized and, and experienced was just the joy of sharing sharing food together with other mm -hmm. people and the community that that does create. So that's another reason um, why we look to share that and mm -hmm. just also so much of our conversation is just what we made for dinner and mm -hmm. things we're trying. And so um, with that same spirit that Julia had was just always trying new things and, and mm -hmm. was never, she was satisfied, but she in a sense did have a part of her that wasn't satisfied with if it didn't go exactly like she thought or how could it be better, mm -hmm. right? She always was looking to improve things and, and almost research why things work the way they did, right? Mm -hmm. So she really had that spirit. And so we all we also want to know kind of those things like, why does this do this like this? Well, let's right. see if we can figure it out. Yeah, because that also helps to just make it more natural over the years. The mm -hmm. Over the years, the more you cook, the more you learn things, the more concepts you learn. Um, it's not that you have to necessarily know the science behind why something does what it does, but if you understand the reason behind it, mm -hmm. then it will keep you from making certain mistakes mm -hmm. at times because right. it will be, you'll know, oh, no, 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 I can't do this because right. it's going to go poorly because of this. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's just your own personal mistakes that you made. And other times it's because you understand why you shouldn't do something a certain way. Mm -hmm. And we can share many stories, and I'm sure we will, of why we, we don't do something a certain mm -hmm. way. Yeah. because we've learned over the years why we do it a different way. Mm -hmm. um, we get a better result, or mm -hmm. it was a total flop, and yeah. it seemed like it would work, but we learned why it didn't. Right. And so that's, a lot, of, <laughs> that's many, a lot of what we would like to impart in our wisdom. That's right. There's many things over the years that haven't worked. We did try to make chocolate milk out of buttermilk. That doesn't work. <laughs> not, not a good... It's not a sweet, savory combo. Well, we never, you know, we, we don't tried. know if you don't try. We don't know if you don't try. So we've tried a lot of things like that. But um, yeah. the other thing is that we're not saying that we have the perfect method. We mm -hmm. certainly don't. But we're just sharing what we have figured out that's worked for us. It might work differently for you if you have a different kitchen, different setup, different mm -hmm. tools, different pans. So in, in explaining our reasoning behind why we chose to do something a different way, you can take that reasoning and if you have a different setup, get to the same end result by using the theory of why we tried it that way. Right. So um, that was the other thing because we don't have the exact same kitchens, mm -hmm. we don't have the exact same ovens, same knives, any of that. But mm -hmm. if we get to the same basic end result, then then we you know we did it. But that means mm -hmm. sometimes not following a hard and fast recipe. Although we will strive to provide you know a guideline of about this much of right. a seasoning. Seasoning is important. Um, if you don't have enough, then it doesn't. It's just going to be bland. So, we will try to provide those guidelines. But yeah. 
cooking can be very forgiving. So baking, not so much. That's why there's not going to be, a, I mean, I, I don't plan to do a whole lot of baking, but um, only things that I have done a lot. But um, cooking can be very forgiving, but also yeah. learning how to correct something if it has gone a little bit off the rails. Mm -hmm. If it is too watery, add more something, right? Flour or cornstock. Right. Those are the kind of things we'll, we'll try to also share um, to help, you know, to, to help you see that if something goes wrong, it's not totally ruined. You can, you can course correct right. from that. Right, because we are not Food Network. We'll no. just go ahead and this is not food lay network. that out there right now. <laughs> You're not Food Network. If you want to get no mistakes, go watch Food Network. Yeah. But that is also because we want people to not be afraid of making mm -hmm. mistakes, right. afraid of messing something up. Mm -hmm. um, we do want to show you what it looks like to not not have it be picture perfect every time. Right. So you can go yeah. pick up a magazine for precise results. Um, if you want something very precisely done, you can yeah. pick up a magazine or go watch Food Network. Um, but we are still learning and growing and we will continue to do that until we can't cook anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind the channel and just sharing with you what we've learned and providing a little bit of a guideline of like, here are some things that we make for dinner. I'm not going to put a number on it because there's it, not one. Because there's not one, right? Only it, the Lord knows. It changes. <laughs> <laughs> it changes a lot. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of what we seek to do and um, we hope that it's helpful. Yeah, we look forward to sharing hopefully a lot of recipes and techniques with everybody. So yeah. we hope you enjoy. Yeah, so thanks for watching and see what happens. Yeah, happy cooking. Happy cooking.